Hello, and welcome to another episode of Otaku Recap. Today, we will go on an adventure through the first season of Overlord, an anime series released in 2015 under Japanese animation studio Madhouse. It is based on a Japanese light novel series written by Kugani Maruyama and illustrated by Sobin. There are spoilers ahead, so please proceed at your own risk. Are you ready? Let's go! We enter the dystopian world of Yggdrasil, a dive massively multiplayer online role-playing game, or DMMO, RPG. It was released in 2126 and is extremely popular in Japan due to its expansive map and high player freedom. It is 12 years later and the game is about to end. Momonga, guild leader and the only player remaining, is waiting until the server is shut down. He goes for a walk in the game and takes with him Seabis, the butler, and combat maids called Pleiades, who are all non-player characters or NPCs. He goes into the throne room of the Great Tomb of Nazarick, where he is met with Albedo, another NPC with horns and black wings, and changes her settings to someone who is deeply in love with him. The timer counts down, but it starts as soon as it ends. Momonga is still in the game, becoming his inhuman character, and the NPCs are moving on their own volition. It's a mystery to him, and so he starts to act by first gathering all the Guardians. Each of the Guardians is introduced, with all of them pledging their loyalty to him. Momonga gives orders to the Guardians and Sebus, with the goal to collect and find out if other players are in the world. In Episode 2, we learn more about the Guardians of Nazarick and how they view Momonga as their ruler, a supreme being who stayed behind. They learn that Nazarick seems to be transported into a different world, and they need to get more information. Momonga goes outside and sees the world that he has created with his guild members. We also hear more about other supreme beings, as the NPCs call the other players who created them. And before the episode ends, we see trouble brewing. A man is planning to attack the village. Momonga is figuring out how to navigate an item, the mirror of remote viewing. As soon as it works, he sees a village being attacked by knights. He initially decides to leave them, as there is no benefit in saving them, but he remembers the time that Touch, another player, had saved him when he was in danger from other players. He decides to save the villagers, also with the intent to test his strength. He saves two sisters using different skills and magic spells and end up giving them a red healing potion as well as a horn they can use to call an army of goblins to protect them. Momonga kills some knights and starts feeling inhuman, just like the character he has become. He goes to the villagers wearing a mask and introduces himself as Ains Ool Gown, which is also the name of their guild. His true intention? To make his name known in hopes of its reaching the other players in the world he is in. He also gathers further information from the village chief, and we learn more about the different countries and empires who are on bad terms. The knights who attacked the village wore the Baharuth Crest, but that may be a trap set by the slain theocracy to create feud between Baharuth and Riestai's kingdoms. The royal head warrior of Riestai arrives and brings him new danger. Magic casters are sent to Karn by the slain theocracy to eliminate Gezef, Riesti's strongest warrior. They come with Archangel Flame, monsters from Yggdrasil. Gezef offers to hire Ains, as Momonga introduced himself as, but he outright declines. Gezef thanks him for saving the village and asks him, a bit desperately, to protect them once more while he goes into battle. He fights a losing battle with the magic casters from slain theocracy, but heads on with willpower. He is about to be slain when Ains switched places with him using an item Ains gifted him earlier. Ains battles with the magic casters from slain theocracy and destroys their trump card in a flash. Ains comes to E. Rantel and registers himself as an adventurer, a people under a guild or organization who goes on quests and fights ogres and goblins. He is with Nabi, a Pleiades, or combat maid, who is also in disguise. They enter a pub and quickly get into a little squabble, as he is hard to ignore with his black-plated armor and helm on, but only a copper-plate adventurer. He throws a guy into a table and ends up breaking the blue potion of a red-haired, iron-ranked girl adventurer. Momon, or Momonga's adventurer name, Ains, replaces it with a red potion. 
The girl brings the red potion to pharmacists Nefiria and Lizzie Balir, grandson and grandmother, to have it assessed, and all are shocked about the value and rarity of this item. Back in the Adventurer's Guild, Momon is looking for quests that could quickly raise his status and gets invited by another group to help on their quest. We meet Swords of the Darkness, as the four members of the group call themselves. They are about to go on their quest of monster eradication when Momon receives a request for his service from Nefiria. Meanwhile, in Irantel Communal Cemetery, a suspicious girl comes in contact with a priest and plans to kidnap Nefiria for his ability to use any magical item. Nefiria and the group of adventurers he hired as guards are on their way to Karn. They take a break when Lukrut decides to tease Momon and Nabi and says that they are lovers. That causes Nabi to let out a slip of the tongue and mentions that Momon already has Albedo. As they are about to continue their journey, a group of ogres and goblins arrive and the adventurers fight them. All are in awe of Momon's strength saying he should be on the higher ranks as adventurer. Meanwhile, Momon recognizes their effective team dynamics and is all praise. He also remembers his own guild members and how they went on quests with other players. We then are back at the cemetery with the Clementine, the girl who wants to kidnap Nefiria. She is getting help from the priest and in return she is helping him to perform a ritual to create an army of zombies. The group of adventurers with Nefiria arrive at Karn. They see that the village is now fenced, protected by goblins. They discover that the goblins were summoned by Enri, the girl that Ains has saved before. It turns out that Nefiria is the pharmacist friend that Enri has mentioned to Ains when he has saved her. Enri shares how Ains has saved their village and at the mention of Albedo, Nefiria is able to piece the bits of information together and realizes that Ains is Momon. Nefiria runs to Momon and his true intention is revealed. He has requested Momon only to learn about about the red potion and nothing more and admits it to him. With all doubts removed, they head on to the forest, where it is guarded by a magical beast called Wise King of the Forest. It turns out to be a giant hamster, which is quickly defeated into submission under Momon's command. Now, Momon has an addition to his party. After completing their quest, the four adventurers take Nefiria to his home, where Clementine is waiting. Moma comes out of the Adventurer's Guild headquarters after registering Hamasuki, the wise king of the forest. He meets Nefiria's grandmother and they go together so he could collect his reward money. Upon arriving at the house, we see that the four adventurers have become zombies and Nefiria is missing. Nefiria's grandmother hires Moma to save his grandson. Momon and Nabe quickly locate Nefiria and they immediately come to the cemetery and they face an army of the undead. Momon summons higher level undead NPCs to take care of the army and they move forward and meet Kaj and Clementine. Kaj summons an undead dragon to fight Nabi. The skeletal dragon is resistant to magic, so Nabi fights only with a sword, but is still at par with the dragon. This pushes Kaj to summon another dragon. On another part of the cemetery, Moma is taking on Clementine. He notices the dragons and orders Nabi to take on her true form as Narborel Gamma. This allows Nabi to quickly finish her battle by casting a high level tier of magic that even a bunch of skeletal dragons resistant to magic cannot block. Momon also was able to finish off Clementine with ease, even after giving her a handicap. He slowly crushes her body, and he's only torturing her because Clementine did it to Ninya, the adventurer Momon worked with. After their swift battles, Momon finds Nefiria with his eyes gouged. Momon brings Nefiria's sight back and breaks the magical item that was forced on him. Cebus, Apleades, and Shaltir are in Irantel on a mission to look for people with magic and bring them to Ains. They hear about Brain on Glaus, a man rumored to be as strong as Gazef, the royal head warrior. Shaltir comes after Brain alone, with Cebus and the Pleiades leaving for another mission to gather information at the capital. Brain runs away, and during Shaltir's chase, she faces a group of adventurers. She learns that there are rangers stationed farther. Not wanting to let them get away, Shaltir comes to them in the forest. She is met by a group of magic casters. 
She attacks and kills the head of the magic casters, but she is also attacked and is mind-controlled. Albedo reports to Ains that Shaltir has revolted against them, but Ains thinks she is mind-controlled by another player. Momon is requested by the guild to take care of the vampire situation. He accepts the mission and says that he has been hunting the vampire for a long time. That vampire is Shaltir. Ains is able to locate Shaltir and comes to her with Albedo. Shaltir is in the middle of a clearing in the forest, not moving at all. Ains determines that she is under mind control, but without orders. He uses a rare item and casts a supreme spell that can remove the mind control over Shaltir, but it does not work. He is shocked by this revelation because only a world level item can nullify that super tier magic spell. They withdraw in the meantime as he mulls over the possibility of another player existing in the world he is in. Ains comes to a mausoleum to acquire world-level items. We are introduced to Pandora's Actor, an NPC created by Momonga to be the guardian of the treasury. In the mausoleum, golems created in likeness of the other supreme beings, Momonga's Nakamas, are on display. We learn how these players have left their items to Momonga when they retired from the game. Ains shares his plans to Albedo. He will have the guardians wield the world-level items and he will fight Shaltir alone with the promise to come back alive. Ains comes to the forest to battle Shaltir. He tries a spell and doesn't get a response. Only an attack will get Shaltir to move. He casts several spells on himself as preparation. When done with all of his preparation, Ain does a full-on attack, damaging the entire clearing of the forest. Shaltir remains in place, although is now moving and is transformed into full battle gear. Ains asks Shaltir who her master is. Her inner consciousness gets a bit baffled, and she questions her actions fighting against Ains, but she retaliates because she was attacked. The battle ensues. Both knowledgeable about each other's strengths and weaknesses, although Shaltir surprises Ains with a few offense and defense skills the latter is unaware of. Shaltir takes damage. After some time, she pulls out her trump card, Einherjar, which is her double, and summons her household of bats, rats, and wolves to pierce them with her lance and get healing powers. Ains casts a powerful attack, completely obliterating Einherjar and Shaltir's household, but now Ains' MP or mana points is low, while Shaltir's HP or hit points is still full. But alas, it seems like Ains has not revealed his trump card yet. After several exchange of attacks, Ains reveals that he has used a false data spell and deceived Shaltir. He feigned that he was affected by Shaltir's attacks and pretended to be unaware of her skills when he is completely knowledgeable about them after going through all NPC settings. Ains transforms into a warrior and is geared with a full armor ready for hand-to-hand -hand combat. He changes his weapons one after the other, the weapons left to him by his guild members, including Shaltir's creator. He defeats Shaltir with the strength of the guild of Ains Uol Gaon. Ains resurrects Shaltir, who has no memory of what happened. He shares that Sebas is not in Nazarick because he is bait. He still intends to find out who is the player that targeted Shaltir. He prepares the Guardians and himself for an unknown enemy that can harm Nazarick. What an adventure that was! And we are only on Overlord's first season. Did you have fun? I hope you all enjoyed that. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe so we can all continue our journey here on Otaku Recap. See you here on the next season. Thank you for watching.